up in Anderson County, right? Yes, we're Sailor's Crossroads. You said your Crossroads. family's from here? Yep. When did you start getting interested in art? Uh, I've been interested in it most all my life. Uh, my grandma done a little painting and crafts, and my mama wrote poetry and stuff. So uh, I've always been interested in artistic stuff. I always drawed when I was little and, and painted, you know, just always just messed around with it. So. But you've taken it beyond messing around with it now, though. Yeah, you're, you're well, yeah. Uh, for a long time, I didn't figure nobody really cared to see it, you know, so uh, I'd just paint stuff, and then one day my wife said, you got to get all this mess out of the house, so, you know, you have about 25 paintings in the corner, you know, you got to gotta get rid of it, so she said, you got to do something with it, so I went and showed it to a lady, and she put in a little gallery in Greenville, and uh, Christopher Park Gallery, yeah, it's a folk art gallery in Greenville, and and after that, I started going to folk art shows, and people was real receptive to it. So I've just kept going to shows and keep getting invited to more and more. And so I just keep uh, keep on moving it around. So. And what was your inspiration for a lot of your art? Uh, I, I like stories, so I like to tell people I'm a, a storyteller. I like to tell stories. I like history a lot. Uh, like a lot of southern uh, history. Grew up out like I say out Sailors Crossroads out in the country and. Uh, a lot of things have changed over the last number of years, and so a lot of uh, ways I grew up and people I grew up with. Uh, most important, I like to tell people's story. So um, a lot of my artwork, I have a lot about people, uh, a lot about stories of this area and things I grew up or stories that my grandparents or my mom or my daddy told me or, you know, things just passed down. And a lot of, uh, a lot of religious work, so I'm, I'm Christian, and so I, a lot of Christian influence there. Grew up in Mount Bethel Baptist Church. And, Go to Honey Path Pentecostal Holiness now, and so over on the Mill Hill. And so uh, influences a lot, and just uh, reading the Bible, and, you know, that's a lot of the influence. But uh, just like tell stories, so just whatever pops up. Like bright colors, and uh, like uh, like to do a lot of a lot of little detail, and uh, focus on the, the people's story mainly. So most of them, I write the story on there. Whatever I want you, you don't have to guess at what I'm trying to convey what I'm trying to tell you. I'll just write it on there so you can read it the way it is. So. I, I've heard people say you're a great storyteller. How, how did you get into t being a storyteller? I don't know. My daddy, I think, I grew up around a lot of folk, old folks that that's all they did is cut up and told stories and I don't think I ever really became a storyteller. I just tell stories. <laughs> people seem to like to hear them. So I, I, just, uh, I just tell you whatever interests me. Some people seem to like to hear it. So. Uh, I do some history talks and speak to different uh, speak to different organizations and groups about different different subjects and uh, I teach a adult Sunday school class and uh, so just over the years just just tell stories. So I think like I say I grew up with a lot of folks and they was always cutting up telling those things and uh, always telling something. So I guess you just pick it up along the way. So. I'm going to put you on the spot if I ask you to tell me one of your favorite stories. Oh, goodness. Uh, no, I'll tell you something. I'll, uh, like I said, a lot of my paintings are, are stories. I know I got one of them in here. Of my, my daddy passed away about 16, uh, let's see, 2006. So it'll be 17 years, June the 1st. And so, uh, you know, like I said, we grew up right there on the Anderson Abbeville County line. And so we'd go fishing a lot. And, uh, a lot of times, uh, he loved to fish. He fished all the time. We'd always have big fish fries every every week, and people from all over the community would come and eat fish. You know, he'd cook 90, 100 fish every weekend. And so, uh, every time it come up thunderstorm, you'd go down a little river down there, and these little catfish about this long would be running. When the water would come down muddy after a thunderstorm, you could just catch these little fish, these little catfish about this long, just as fast as you could jerk them out of the water and so uh, when daddy always caught catching them hand over fish so we'd run down there to the uh to the river well we were sitting down there and we was catching those fish and uh all of a sudden i was sitting on the bank right beside him and and all of a sudden he grabs my my fishing rod out of my hand just jerks out of my hand to start whacking the bank just as hard as he could whack it and I looked and I said, what are you doing? And he said, there's a snake in the water. A snake didn't come out of the water. Well, instead of using his perfectly good fishing rod that he had in his hand, he jerked mine, got my line all tangled up, got me all messed up. While he's over catching fish, I'm trying to straighten out a, a rod and reel he just beat snake with. So uh, that's the kind of fella he was. So he uh, he whooped that snake pretty good with my fishing rod and while he held on to his, still fishing. So that's, uh, that's some of the stories I like to tell stuff you know just little memories like that things growing up
And you've gotten some attention regionally. Talk about your involvement with Howard Finster's foundation and what they're doing. So, um, so I was recently, uh, I think it was two weekends ago, uh, I was at uh, Paradise Garden, which is on the National Historic Register of Historic Places, whatever you call it. And um, he's got a place down there, Paradise Garden, that Howard Finster, which is probably the most well folk art, most well known folk artist to ever live. He was. Uh, he was just legendary and uh, very popular, and he, he just made a huge impact on the folk art world. And so, he um, his garden that he built was about two acres, and he built all kind of structure and all kind of artwork. I mean, it's definitely worth a day trip, Somerville, Georgia, for anybody to go see. But they have two events a year. Uh, one of them's in May, called May Artist Day, where they invite invite 12, 15 artists or so to uh, come show their work at, at Paradise Garden. And so uh, just participated in that. And they invited me back in the fall to uh, the big show, which is Fenster Fest, which is, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of people come and participate in Fenster Fest. And they have about 60 artists at it. And it's, it's one of the bigger bigger art shows in the country as far as folk art, you know, goes. So um, they do a lot of fundraising to try to, try to preserve a lot of stuff he built. He built a folk art chapel, which is a four or five story chapel that he hand built. And he's got a room of mirrors. And I mean, you just couldn't imagine. It's just so much stuff you can't, you can't even describe it. It's one of those things you just got to see to believe. So um, there's a lot of videos online about it. And a lot of music videos back in the 80s were filmed there and stuff. And so he was a, he was a popular guy. And so they just trying to preserve what he, what he started and also inspire future artists you know to uh to to keep doing what you know kind of the same field that howard was out there doing so he would paint on anything yeah Do, will you paint on anything i'll or? paint on anything i i like to paint on plywood most but uh it's just easy to paint on but i paint on i i got old uh disc hair plows over here and i got bottles uh a guy knew passed away and his wife gave me about 30 old ancient mama bottles that he had, he collected all kind of stuff. He was a folk artist in the area, and he uh, he he had all kind of stuff. And I probably went and got 500 bottles, and that was about 30, 40 ancient mama bottles. So I actually I paint on them a lot, and uh, paint little stuff on them. And so yeah, I pretty much paint on anything. But I like plywood and and the big canvases. I do a lot of the, these old painters tarps. I like to do them. And so, uh, but plywood is about my favorite thing. I can kind of set anywhere with it and and uh, a good stable stable thing to paint on so how how, how do you find, i'm going to get to this in a minute you're a busy man how do you find time to paint oh i just uh anytime i got a free moment i you know i just try to paint a little bit I try to paint a little bit every day so i i uh i do a little bit do a little bit every day so just you know if it's 10 minutes or if it's two hours i try to get something in every day so yeah. What do your kids think of your work? Oh, they love it. They uh, they think it's wonderful. So they they like to paint too. Uh, I just got done one about three weeks ago, and uh, I went to deliver some grits down at Grits and Groceries, and uh, my wife sends me a message, and I had two little boys absolutely covered in paint, and they had done they had done smeared my paint, they had done got into my paint, and repainted my artwork that I just finished and uh, painted herself and the couch and the recliner and the ottoman so, and the carpet and the rug. So, they, uh, so I got in trouble worse than they did, but, but uh, I had to repaint my painting. So one of them in there got painted twice, so that's all right. So they're very interested in artwork as well. And you mentioned the grits. Tell me about the grits. So uh, I own Atkin Milling Company. I make stone ground grits and cornmeal. And, uh, Pretty popular in the area. Um, I'm, I'm partial to them, but everybody everybody seems to brag on them and like them. So they um, uh, they've served at multiple restaurants in the area. Um, grits and groceries, like I say, down Sailors Crossroad, they serve them. And Indigenous Underground in Abbeville, there are a uh, the lady there, Erica, that's the chef down there. She's actually the uh, one of the state ambassador chefs for the state of South Carolina that the the governor. Uh, puts forth every every year so she serves my grits and cornmeal so uh doolittles and anderson different places and i sell them in a lot of the markets like mccall's produce here in honey path and uh just a, a lot of the markets like that uh happy cow and 
Winslet's and the Pantry down in Greenwood. And it's, you know, I could keep naming them, but they sell them there. And then I also sell them at art shows. So most all the, the art shows I go to, they they real, you know, receptive and let me let me sell my grits there. So I'll sell them at my art shows, and then sometimes I'll go to farmers markets and sell them. So. Uh, you know, I mean, you can come to the house and buy them. So they just, anything you want grits, we, we'll pass them along to you. So they, they've been pretty popular, though. So they, uh, everybody seems to like them. So, so you can find them pretty much anywhere if you start looking for them. If you really start looking for them, yeah, you, you can find them. So I don't really do any social media or anything, but they pop up. People say they see them on social media all the time. So they'll pop up around. But most uh, most little farmer's markets around here carry them or somebody, somebody know how to get a hold of them and to get them so i also understand you have something you do in graveyards you want to tell me about that yeah yeah i'll restore graves a lot i like to restore graves uh, i do new graves too so i uh, don't do it as much as i used to i mean i do still do some but that that whole industry kind of got messed up after covid and it hadn't hadn't really got back right so like i used to get a foot stone two or three weeks now they tell you it might be nine months to a year so that's just hard to hard to do but I like the my favorite thing to do is to actually restore like broke monuments or graves that just been left unkept for decades you know go in there fix them back up and fix the broke tombstones clean them get the grass out and regravel uh, but I, I do do a good many new you know new folk you know new burials and uh, do do tombstones that kind of I think I got started my, my mama she always she always takes care of everybody in the family that passed away. Like that's always has been a big thing my whole life. I had to go help her take care of graves, and so uh, I just looking around the grave one day, and I said, you know, it's real sad that a lot of these don't get took care of. I mean, you know, everybody passed away, my mama take care, and it got more and more every year. You know, had to buy more and more flowers and clean off more and more graves. So we end up spending a lot of time in cemeteries. So I said, well. I started just uh, saying, you know, some other people might need this help too. So I started doing it, and and I enjoy it. I'm peaceful, and, you know, nice, you know. It's something to be proud of. You ride by and see it, and think about the people. I most everybody. The good thing about me and living in this small area, and like I say, I don't do any advertising or anything. So most of those word of mouth. So most of those people I knew. So you can do a lot of reflecting and. A lot of people you thought a lot of. It's uh, it's just makes you, you know, feel good to, to do something for them and to, the last moments like that and something that'll last and people remember them by. So that's kind of what I like to, why I like to do that. So. And you have a full-time job working for the school district. Right? Yes. Tell me yeah. what you do for the facilities manager at the Career and Technology Center in Williamston. So uh, I've been out there 20, well, 23 years. So. A great day I graduated high school, I went in the next day full time. I was working part time and I went in six o'clock morning the day after I graduated high school. Been there ever since. Okay, so what are you doing all your free time? <laughs> Sleep about two hours a night if I'm lucky. And uh I like shark fish, I like to kayak. Uh do a lot of fishing, a lot of uh um, You gonna do the river rally this year? Uh I've rally? done it a good many. I've actually I've actually um I've actually kayaked the whole entire Saluda River, the whole two hundred miles, so Starts up above Greenville and uh, the South Saluda and the North Saluda come together, form the Saluda River, and it goes all the way through uh, Columbia where the Broad and the Congre and the Saluda all come together down there below Riverbank Zoo, and it's 200 miles. So I've actually done the whole, I've seen the whole Saluda River, so I've done the Saluda Rab River Rally a number of times. I don't know if I'll make it up this year. I've been pretty busy, but uh, but I have done it, and it's a pretty awesome event. You know, I'm glad to. I'm glad they do it. Beautiful river though. I love the Saluda River. That's one of my favorite places in the world to be. People that ain't never been on it just don't know what they're missing. And it changes a lot in those 200 miles and a lot of big rapids in some of it and a lot of it's just peaceful and calm. So it's a fun river. For people who want to see more of your artwork or find out more about it, where can they find out? Yep. Uh, Christopher Park Gallery in Greenville. Um, come out to art shows, uh, folk art shows. Um, you know, I don't mind giving that phone number. They feel free to call me up, check stuff out. Um, like I said, I don't have a website. I don't have social media or anything. But, but um, you know, I'm open to anybody who wants to call me up and come check it out. I'll be glad to share it with them, show it to them.